Okay, so that is the third video where we will learn about the multivariate normal distribution. Now we have been considering random vectors for a while. And as with random numbers, there are many distributions which a random vector may have. And one of the most important is the multivariate normal distribution. And since we are assuming our residuals individually are normal distributed, that becomes immediately relevant. And in this section, I want to just show you the most important properties and also the definition of a multivariate normal distribution. The first thing to notice is something a bit surprising happens. So let me first write something wrong. So one might think that, again, that is wrong. Don't believe this. If Z1 up to Zn are normally distributed, that then Z, the vector of all of them, might be normally distributed. And that's not true. So instead, what one has is, so that I said is not true, what one has instead is the other direction. So if a random vector follows a multivariate normal distribution, then all components are normally distributed, but there is something more to it. They need to form together in the plane or in higher dimensional space, a nicely shaped cloud, which is like an ellipse or an ellipsoid in higher dimensions. And it turns out, just assuming that the components are normally distributed is not enough for that. So that is maybe the main surprise in the whole section, that the definition requires something more than all components are normal distributed. So definition that follows a multivariate normal distribution, if and only if you transpose that is normally distributed for all u in Rn. And that looks a bit odd, but one thing which is quite reassuring in this context is that includes our previous attempt of defining multivariate normal distribution, only it has more conditions. So you transpose that, let me just write that out. So that is some i from one to n u i z i. And we need to check this for all u, so we can look at special cases. So for example, if u is one zero zero zero, so the first standard basis vector, then you transpose z is 1 times z1 plus 0 times z2 and so on, so z is z1. So that condition here, u transpose z is normally distributed, applied to this vector u says z1 is normally distributed. And same thing, I don't know, let's call z e1, and then you can guess how the other ej are defined. It's just the vector which has zeros everywhere except at component j. It is 1. So then similarly ej transpose z, where j is the j standard basis vector, is zj. And so if z is normally distributed as a vector, then all zj are normally distributed. So this is the arrow I drew here. If the vector is normally distributed, then all components are normally distributed. The additional condition is that is a projection onto u in a sense. So in a sketch, let's assume n equals 2. So we have z1 here, z2 here. If we do this vector e1 times z, then we project everything down onto e1 and we get z1. If we project onto E2, then we project everything in this direction and we get Z2. That's what we have just done algebraically. And the full condition says if we project on any other plane, let's say here is U here, then the random variable projected orthogonally onto this plane must still be normal distributed. So that is the additional conditions we require. And I do in the notes and experiment with R where I show you a distribution which satisfies this condition but not that condition because I used a computer for illustration. I'm not going to do that here in the video but have a look at the notes where my R experiment is. They have an example which has this but where the vector made up of the sets is not normal distributed. Good. Now the important thing to know, and that's for many people the start of the whole thing, is there is a quite abstract theorem, which I'm not going to even state here. Let me just write it informally. The expectation of Z, which I want to call mu here, and the covariance of Z, which I want to call sigma here, they uniquely specify the distribution of Z if we know it's a normal distribution. So, well, that's the same as in the one-dimensional case. 
In the one-dimensional case, if you have a normal distribution, if you know the mean and the variance, you know everything about this. Here, if you know the mean vector, vector of length n, and the covariance matrix, a positive semi-definite matrix of size n times n, then you know the distribution already given it's a normal distribution. Of course, without this constraint, if it's not a normal distribution, there are many distributions. But these two quantities for normal distributions say uniquely which one it is, and the other way around, for every mu and every positive semi-definite sigma, there is a normal distribution. So these specify a normal distribution completely. And what we say in this case is that it's normal distributed with mean mu and covariance matrix sigma. So we write the same symbol you also use in the one dimensional case to denote this normal distribution. And well, obvious properties are here. If z is distributed like this, then it has expectation mu and covariance matrix sigma. And there are a few more properties which are pretty straightforward. For example, if z is distributed like this, then z plus b is still normally distributed, but with mean mu plus b in covariance matrix sigma. Same as for numbers. And az is still normally distributed, and we just need to check the mean and the variance. We know the expectation of az is a times the expectation of z, so that must be the mean. And we know the covariance matrix has this funny A and A transpose, so that must be A sigma A transpose. So the main result which one needs to think about is AZ is still normally distributed, so it still satisfies the condition from the definition. And once we have this, we know expectation goes here, and our expectation is A mu, and covariance matrix goes here, and we have seen covariance matrix of AZ is A covariance matrix of Z, A transpose. So that's then straightforward. And a last condition, if Y is another of these random variables, say Y has mean mu Y and covariance matrix sigma Y, and Z has mean mu Z and covariance matrix sigma Z, and if they are independent, then y plus z is again normal distributed with mean mu y plus mu z and covariance matrix sigma y plus sigma z. And again, in this result, the main information is hidden in this seemingly obvious thing. The sum is still normal distributed. And once we know that working out, that must be the mean and that must be the covariance is straightforward. But I want to point again at the word independent here. That's really required. If they are not independent, things can go wrong in exactly the same way as they could go wrong here. So we really need this independence. Good. And to conclude, let me just work out what do we get for epsilon and for y. And that's now rather straightforward because we know the means in covariance matrix already. So for our model, we have epsilon is normally distributed with mean zero and covariance matrix sigma squared i. And we need to check this. So we know if it's normally distributed, that's the mean and that's the covariance. We still need to check that it satisfies this condition. So let's do that just to be super sure. Let u be in Rn, our test vector, which we project onto. Then u transpose epsilon is u1 epsilon 1 plus u2 epsilon 2 and so on up to un epsilon n. And at the start, we only know each of these epsilon i is normally distributed. So that's n0 sigma squared. Then by what we know about the one-dimensional normal distribution, we can conclude if we multiply with the number, it's still normal distributed. So that's n0 u1 sigma squared. And similarly, this one will be n0 u2 sigma squared distributed all the way until here n0 un sigma squared. And they used a result about one-dimensional normal distributions, namely if I multiply a normal distributed random variable with the number, it stays normally distributed. And now I need another result, namely to deal with these plus signs here. And that goes just 
like what I wrote for you here. Namely, if I add independent normal distributed random variables, the result is still normal distributed. So we are all good because we assumed the epsilon to be independent. So that is a sum of independent normal distributed random variables. And that, again, we know for one dimensional normal distribution is normal distributed. And with this, we have checked the definition. We had to check u transpose z is normally distributed for all u. We took u transpose epsilon for arbitrary u. We found it's normal distributed. So the result is epsilon as a vector is also normal distributed. And once we have this, then we are done. We have worked out the mean and the covariance matrix earlier. Good. Then y is easier. So y is x beta plus epsilon. And that's just the shift of a normal distribution and shift of a normal distribution. Not sure whether I actually wrote that earlier, but they are normal distributed. So that means y is still normal distributed with mean x beta from the shift. And the covariance matrix is still sigma squared identity. That's what we got for the epsilon only now shifted to a new mean. Great. So that's what we need to know about the multivariate normal distribution. And there is one last point which I left here for the end. Namely, there is one special case when I write normal distributed here. It is allowed that that is a normal distribution with variance zero, which normally is just called a constant. So normally distributed, I should have written or constant to just account for the case that the variance in some directions may be zero. So let me just do a sketch. So if we have points which just always live on the x-axis, so if we have x is, say, n0, 1, then the vector which is x and 0, two dimensions, that's what I plotted a sample of here, that's still normal distributed with mean 0 and covariance matrix. I haven't worked it out beforehand. I think it's 1, 0, 0, 0. And this is just a special case. So the sum of the variances are now zero if I project on the second axis, but it's that still by convention counts as a two-dimensional normal distribution. Great, and that's everything you need to know here. Okay, so that was our video about the multivariate normal distribution, and that concludes our series about random vectors. So see you soon, and bye-bye.